I want to talk currencies, treasuries, financial markets with Dan Deming, managing partner at KKM Financial. Dan, welcome. Good to see morning, you. Man. Good morning. The greenback continues to struggle. What's a dollar bull to do here? Well, I guess if the trajectory of interest rates are what the market's pricing in, then the dollar could struggle for a while here, Ben. But, uh, you know, we'll see. There's other, you know, gold is another uh, a place that seeing uh, flows, uh, as you were just discussing, and and silver to some degree. So, you know, the dollar is uh, is in a little bit of a precarious position here. I mean, still, at even at the parity level at the 100, you know, it, it's still not at a point where I think that it's something that's imminent of something that's going to really shift uh, the markets as far as perception moving forward. But, uh, you know, you're basically just seeing uh, the idea that the Fed is ahead of other central banks now. We did get a couple of cuts from other central banks, but then they put on their rate cutting policy on hold. And now with the Fed ready to move, it does appear based on what we heard and what is being priced in that the Fed is going to be a little bit more aggressive maybe than other central banks across the globe. So that's probably another factor contributing to why the dollar is under some pressure here, Ben. Okay, Dan, I, I might have caught you off guard a little because it's actually a little bit higher here today, right? Today so, it is. Right. Today so it is. I no, was right. talking more longer term rather than just this slight lift we're seeing here today because you can see on the chart it's been on the today decline for a while, right? Cascading lower. Today we are up about a half or six tenths of percent right. as we take a look. I just wanted to point to you've got now the dollar on the left side of the screen. You've got the tenure on the right side. So maybe no wonder that the dollars come off to the extent that it has. Has, right with tenure with yields coming off and, and expectations for fed rate cuts but then you also have this kind of one-two punch dan where we've seen the euro currency which has rallied sharply and you've got the british yes. pound which is also rallying sharply i mean uh, uh you can understand why you've seen this dollar demise yeah and the japanese yen really another product that's off. right well yeah and i mean really if you look across the board at the majors ben uh the euro at better than one year highs the uh, british pound went to almost two and a half year highs yesterday uh and you get uh, you know the yen coming uh you know gaining some strength you know coming off of those uh, multi-decade lows versus the dollar uh even the australian dollar is showing some signs of life too so um yeah that's i mean that's the theme to me that's the theme ben uh as you pointed out though today we're seeing a little back up in the market after yesterday we did see the uh the british pound uh, go to a new uh, better than two-year high so i think that that's one of the headwinds here for the dollar is the idea that the fed's going to be pretty aggressive moving into the fall and early next year couple that with you know we discuss this periodically but uh, you know the debt situation is not going away and that could be another drag on the dollar mm -hmm. longer term as well how about stronger jobs, Dan? I mean, we were just talking a minute ago about how the focus kind of shifted from inflation to the jobs. If we start to see strength there, does that buoy the dollar? Does that support it? It does. Yeah, I mean, in theory, it does, Ben. And you would think that uh, it would work its way into the markets mm -hmm. as well, because, you know, anything that's going to slow the Fed down or anything that's going to indicate that the Fed might be a little more, uh, well, they are, they have been very pragmatic, so I don't want to use that term. Mm -hmm. But anything that uh, is indicating that the Fed might move uh, a little slower than what the market anticipates. Mm -hmm. But what, I mean, what have we got priced in right now through early next year? I mean, I don't know. I think it was, what, was it eight cuts be between now and early next year? or it's it's a lot yeah. i guess is my yeah. point and well, the market's uh, been uh invest traders have been out over their skis for a while now i feel like big time yeah yeah so anything that's going to shift that bend if we do see the labor market stabilize if we see inflation all of a sudden not necessarily uh continue to move towards that two percent level that's gonna that's gonna support the dollar at least uh in in a short-term perspective because you know the, mar the dollar's playing off of uh you know the pricing structure for the treasury markets mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. are very close to seeing uh, the two your 10 year coming out of that inversion mm -hmm. it might happen today it might happen tomorrow uh based on the data tomorrow so uh, that's another factor that the market's still trying to figure out after being you know inverted here for the better part of the last two years uh you know it does appear that we're going to see the the back end of the curve the yields uh, start to uh, outpace uh, the shorter end as we continue to work through this rate situation where we saw you know rapid rise and now it appears that the market's pricing at a pretty substantial cut here in the next six months okay so jobs u.s debt which came first chicken or the egg in terms of some of those yeah. foreign currencies uh, getting into the yen here just a little bit i wanted to point to on kind of a data light environment today in terms of the u.s but uh, yes, data is. dependent environment i mean i imagine the dollar is kind of focused on the global aspect as well i'm taking a look at japan leading index down 2.1 percent uh, from 
0.3 prior, not as much of a decline as expected. They were looking for down 2.6%, but for the month of June, that leading index at 109 uh, came in a little bit above the 108.6 okay. they were looking for, uh, but again, down from 111, 111.2. So, but, but again, if we're talking the dollar, you've got to be focused on, it seems like, again, not just the U.S., uh, China, Japan, across the board, Asia and sure. Europe. For sure. Yeah. And Japan's inflation now is uh, appears to be running over 2%. So that could be a, another factor for the dollar moving forward. But the euro has the biggest influence. Yes. I mean, you know, let's face it, Ben. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is the biggest contributor to the dollar uh, calculate index calculation. And, uh, you know, and that's where I think, you know, you're going to see uh, the most impact. And Currently, the euro is coming off of uh, basically a little bit better than one year high as it's backing off the last day or so. But overall, that trend continues to maintain. Then you'd think the dollar is going to be under some pressure. But if euro, if the euro all of a sudden starts to uh, slip a little bit, if uh, all of a sudden the expectations in the eurozone are uh, you know cut as far as expectations moving forward, that's going to help support the dollar as well. Yeah, threat of further uh, BOJ hikes to come. Yes. Uh, so a lot of kind of moving parts here, it sounds like, it, in terms of dynamics for the U.S. dollar. But it's at an extreme right now. And I always say, again, that they don't spend a lot of time, by defini definition, on these extremes. So something to keep an eye on here. We, I'd expect to move tomorrow's more. Tomorrow's data, Ben. Yeah, tomorrow's data will probably be a big driver in that uh, price action. Okay, then we'll keep an eye on yields and the dollar in reaction to that per year uh, thoughts here. Dan, appreciate you sharing them with us. Dan Deming, managing partner at KCAM Financial.